but it's Friday. It's Friday to me and to you. A beautiful morning to you as well. It's another one-time opportunity for us to meet this morning, 22nd of December 2023. And my name is Olori Age. I hope you had a splendid night yesterday. Yesterday for me was um, <laughs> late night. Myself, I enjoy. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Even though we are apart, but we are still putting it together for your family and values. You're welcome. Joy, what's good up? Good morning. You're looking all good <laughs> in the Christmas season. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing with you. You're all glittery. I'm red, I'm blue, and everything all together. Good morning. Welcome to Family and Values. Of course, like you know, today it's Friday and we're approaching the weekend. Not just the weekend, we are approaching the big day that we celebrate. Yes, 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 we are the expecting to see some christmas um gift here already so that'll be true in one so, so tell me where are you country. taking us for christmas you're a big sis you should be the one to tell me that <laughs> you know okay what do you want to go for christmas i didn't get that <laughs> what do you want me to take you for christmas well after work on christmas day um hmm oh, where do i want i want to watch a movie <laughs> okay We'll see what will happen, <laughs> but don't forget, it's still family and values, and it's all about you, your relationship, your home, your family, your loved ones, people around you, your neighbor, your colleagues in the office, it's still family. Yes, because if you can't work yeah. as family, good things will not come it around will definitely us. not come around. Please don't forget we are streaming across all our social media platforms. Download the Galaxy mobile app so that you can watch us on the go. Follow our um, Instagram page, follow our Facebook Turn on your notification button so that you don't miss exciting moments like this. Yes, today. Hmm. <laughs> we are not going to break any table. We are going to keep it cool. We have our guest pretty seated already. And our topic is parenting in African homes. Parenting in African homes. How well do you, you know, carry out and discharge your duties? as responsible father mother brother sister son and daughters okay we'll be talking more on that with our guest today like joy will say our guest is pretty seated <laughs> but this one is handsomely seated <laughs> i will have none other than talk by olukoli i've known this man since when he was with tribune and we are meeting again today after a long time <laughs> he's a media consultant a publisher and also Flash Media TV um, CEO. So, you're welcome. Thank you very welcome much. Welcome to the show. To the show. Thank, <laughs> you, thank you. It's good to see you. I'm to see you again it's too. Almost, it's almost 15 to 20, almost 20 years. Yes, almost 20 years now. Uh, Egon, <laughs> it's good to see you. Thank you. Thank God for your <laughs> Thank you for your life. Joy, thank you for bringing <laughs> me for here. Thank you my invitation. It's a very short <laughs> invitation. I'm really honored. Thank, thank really you honored. too. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay, so parenting in African homes. Like I said, you are going to unveil many things. Then you, the, you know, the interior, the primitive, the old time ways of parenting in African homes. Now and then, what are those things? that are missing what are those things that used to be you know the quote and unquote the first thing that you notice that yeah this one is well cultured this one is you know from a good home parenting in africa right? yes uh, parenting in <coughs> africa homes um when you look at it is from uh, we'll take it from different uh, perspectives our culture, our tradition, our behavioral pattern, the effect of acculturation in what we are doing now. Now, if we take this one after the other, even in Africa, the way we, I mean, nurture our children is quite different depending on where you are coming from. For example, in Yoruba land, uh, you must be an exemplary person hmm. you, because you are the symbol of that family you are coming from so when you are going out in the morning w the first thing your parent will tell you is not your man it will show remember the son of <laughs> whom you are it's very key because they know that you are a symbol of the house you carry the emblem you carry the image of the house so they can't afford to, i mean you can't afford to tarnish that image, image 
for whatever reason. So it, the first warning is always remember the son or the daughters of whom you are. That's the first thing. There and then they would start telling you this is what you need to do because parenting is bringing up children. Yeah. In I mean, Christian will say in a godly way. Yeah. It's a godly way is an addition because they want you to behave like I mean somebody that comes from a godly family. Godly family, uh, if we want to define that, it, I mean we can look at that from different perspectives too. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, first thing is always know that you are the mirror of your family. Mm. You are the symbol of your family. So because you are not the only person that will bear that name, others yet unborn will still bear that same name. So it is the legacy that you are putting on the ground that others will follow. If you have a bad legacy, I mean, even let's look at the Bible. There are some names in the Bible that people cannot even give to their children. children. It is because of bad influence. Same thing in our culture, Africa generally. If if you are, if you come from, uh, let's look at Oyenusi. Mm. Oyenusi, I mean, happens to be a very dangerous arm robber. You can't tell anybody that you are from Oyenusi family. If they, I mean, first mentioning of that name Oyenusi will strike something in your mind. So people will keep asking questions. Who is this guy from Oyenusi family? <laughs> Which Oyenusi <laughs> is this? <laughs> Look at it now. So it, it's like, uh, don't put your parents' name in mud. Don't put your parents' names in mud. Now, um, I grew up from a family where my dad was a politician, but though he still tried to balance up training and discipline. But there's one thing I've discovered. I think parenting then, um, would you agree that it affected the self-esteem of the youth we had then? That's talking about the grown-ups now, that comparing to this generation where we want our kids to voice out. Uh, when you look at this generation, and uh, you just oppose that with uh, the older generation. You know that we are in jet age now. <laughs> you are in jet age. I mean, and it's very, very difficult. One, they want to respect. They want you to give them respect. Something that we, I mean, we dare not, we dare not. to our own parents. But now, those, uh, the jet age uh, children, they want that respect. They want you to respect their opinion too. It's not like unlike in the past. If you misbehave, even before you say Jack Robinson, <laughs> you get dirty slaps left and right. But now you can't do that to your children. Before you know it, Umar right will say, Ah, this is an abuse. Hmm. <laughs> this is an abuse. Okay. Huh? So um what are the major keys when you talk about parenting in African home? What are the major keys? Those things that are very, very vital and important that parents should look out, you know, that it is necessary for parents to, to actually work on. It's necessary for parents to take care of their children. You see, when you nurture your children, especially in the way of the Lord, it will be very difficult for them to deviate. But nowadays, parents depend so much on children mm. Mm. so much so you have little or no say about what they do mm. i mean the, yeah we have so many vices you you find it very difficult to challenge them that why are you doing this do you know what ca this can bring to you in the long run but parents these days find it difficult to correct them because they know what their children are doing is what brings money mm -hmm. or food to their table. Mm -hmm. So how do you now correct them? Uh, parents need to do more. Honestly, what we are getting now is uh, out of it. Parents need to do more. It, I mean, because uh, things are changing drastically. Things are changing. And when you look at it, the upcoming generation, let's look at a 15 year old getting pregnant mm. somebody that's is still under training mm. what do you expect ah to, to 
to to pass across to to our child. Somebody that is yet under training you and is pregnant after giving birth, what what do you expect her to pass to that baby? Because he, parents continue to train you even till old age. Hmm. My mom is over eighty. Till today, my mom will still call me. Uh, Joe, call me, oh, please, oh, uh, don't do this, oh, at my own age. <laughs> oh my God. But you can't tell our children now. You say, ah, dad, I know what to do now. Uh, don't worry, I can find my way out of it. Hmm. Out of what? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, so, it's so difficult. That's why parents still need to do more. To do more. To do more. Because what we are getting now is so alarming. It's so alarming. Okay, um, I would like to put this straight. Do you think that the parents in this generation have failed in terms of discipline and raising children? Seriously. Comparing to where we are, where you are coming from. Seriously. Hmm. Oh. I mean, if you go to school now, I, I taught for nine years, six months in Lagos State. Nine years, public school, six months in Lagos State. I, there, there was no issue during those periods. But if you discipline, a, I mean, a child now in the school, Hmm. They will call their parent. Yeah. Their parent will come to school hmm. to attack the teacher. Yes, sir. I mean, well, it's like you are giving the children a leverage to, to, to do to anything, misbehave. to misbehave. That's just it. But, I mean, and that is not helping. It's not. Because, I mean, you, you, you can't say you want to train your children all alone. No. Or that's what you have to put one or two things there hmm. to train the children. Not anymore. But not anymore. Yeah. Even, even within the community. That's if right. there's anything and you report the sure. child, they will take you take it as an offense. Hmm. Unlike in our days. Ah, you dare not. Hmm. Even before you get home. <laughs> yeah, I, I, will share, I, will share, I will share an experience. I will share my own experience. I'm still going to share my Pito story. So don't don't go anywhere. Now, it's still family and values, and we're going to be connecting with our Zoom guest. In person of Anka Amura, Amura Wai. She is a mother, a wife, and a natural health ambassador. She is also a book editor. She, is a, she has the parenting skill counseling um, experience also. So, Anka, are you there? Hey, she's pretty looking, waiting for us mm. here. Hello, good morning. Yes, yes. Compliments Hello, of the morning. season to you. Yeah. Thank <laughs> all you. the way, good all morning. the way from Lagos State, Lekki Aja Axis. <laughs> How are you this morning? How is Aja? I am good. I'm good. We are good. Pretty cool. Chris, we are crisp. <laughs> you say. Thank God for that. So we. We'll Thank God for that. It's so good to have you. We're so delighted. Myself, I enjoy. We, yeah, we, we appreciate you, your, your being here, ma'am. You're looking good this <laughs> morning. I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Okay, like you have been following us. And I'm still going to share my Pito story because I know you will say something about it too. Because I know you. I know what you can do. Now, <laughs> we've been talking about parenting in African homes. Can we say parents, like Joy asked earlier, can we say parents have left many things unattended to because they allow the jet age to come into the lives of their children and they can no longer hold, you know, the horses? What's your view about parenting in African homes so far, now and then? Yes, um, just like the, the earlier guest said, we've come a long way very long way from what parenting was 20, 30, 40 years ago, and uh, from what we have now. And yes, we have the millennials, we have the Gen Zs, those ones are <laughs> even the tougher ones to deal with. And um, why we are trying to adjust to what the age of takes to us as parents, we also are looking back and trying to compare and contrast with what we were raised with. No doubt, we had great values from yesteryears, produce who we are now, 
I'm in my 50s, and we have the parents who are in their 30s. And then, of course, like a former um, speaker said, we have those teenagers who are, who are children, children yet trying to be parents. And each set of age has an input in what makes up the totality of what parenting is now. While we were raised with certain values that generally perceived to be great and has brought who we are, we must also remember that when time moves, everything also has to move along. We are not set in time and set like in a bubble. What happened 20 years ago, 30 years ago, is not the same as what is happening now. So while we move along with time, we also must not cast away the good things that the old age has got. Yes, to say, for instance, for many people in my age group, um, I was parented, as I would say, by, in the sense that my father was an educationist, and so he knew what to do and how to um, relate with us as children. Passing on those values of old was also balanced with values that even now is still relevant. So why we are quick to say that parents of these days have their lapses, and for, I must say to a large extent, have failed. We must also remember that what is making them to fail is an impact of how they were also parented. Hmm. How? What do I mean by this? You say things, you do things, you are who you are now as a result of how you were parented. Certain things, certain relics, certain uh, experiences will begin to project into your life now. For instance, let me give you an example. Somebody says, oh, I, well, I really suffered as a child. I mean, my parents really, yeah, I really, really suffered. Uh, I had to wake up early in the morning. I had to do this. I had to do, so I don't want my children to be like that anymore. Forgetting that the discipline of all that you went through has molded you to be who you are now. Why you try to, I mean, you feel you have a pain, pain, quote and unquote, of being raised that way, being raised harshly, and you don't want your children to go through the same thing, you also must not throw away the values that were inculcated in who you are today to your children. I'm not saying that our parents were perfect. I mean, I, I refuse to say so. There are certain things that they did. I'm, I'm waiting to listen to Lori's uh, story now. Certain things that were truly unfair, hmm. even in their effort and their being to raise us as perfect, um, to raise us into perfect adults. So let me hear Lori's story. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, uh, Ma, I would like to <laughs> ask the same question I asked our in-house guest. Parenting in those days and now, comparing it and looking at the fact that in those days the service team of the children then were tampered with do you think that has resulted to the parenting we have in this present age I'll, I'll give you a very typical example in those days we couldn't talk to our parents we couldn't ask them questions that we needed to but presently we have kids asking us questions and we providing that um, so, explanation to them yeah. giving them reasons why we need to do certain things so do you think that the way they parented us then affected our low self-esteem and that is what is affecting this generation today i'm still trying to decipher generations that generation as in um who we are now? Past, yes, maybe, who um, we are um, from the thirties all the way to this jet age from the forties, from, from the forties, from the fifties to the thirties to the late thirties to this current jet age of the early twenties into the teenage age here. Okay. Yes, I would say there were lapses. Truly, truly, there were lapses. Um, the generation past was more for children are to be seen and not to be heard. Who born you that you say, why are you doing this? Why are we not getting this? <laughs> and I will also mention this story very briefly. A colleague of my, a friend of my husband said he was at work with, uh, he was in a job situation, that he was in employment. And true to it, being who and how he was raised, he make a cower before his boss. He had a white boss. And then here is this 30 year old man that 
walks into the office and calls his boss by his face, uh, first name and just discusses with him. And if this boss says anything that you're saying, no, 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 I don't agree with that. Meanwhile, those of them who are in their fifties were, eh? You will talk to your boss like that? But guess what? This boss had more respect for this younger man. So yes, because we were not raised to talk back, we are not raised to ask questions, we are not raised to be heard. The self-esteem issue truly, truly comes into place when you are comparing then and now. Let's not go into um, the imbalance of it. But yes, I agree with you. It does affect the self-esteem of most older people and younger people. My story. I remember when I was young, my mom sent me to the market, Oingbo Market precisely. And when I got there, I, as I was just buying, you know, young girl, shopping everywhere, pape, fry fish and everything. I bought pito because I was, you know, thirsty. And I was, you know, then it used to be in the lylon, such as before pure water started coming in. So I just bought and I was taking it, walking around, buying what I was sent. <laughs> One of my mom's friends saw me and was like, how can you be, you know, taking pito and be walking around? Is it that you are hungry? Is it that you are, she, you know, she scolded me and everything, took the pito from me and told me to throw it away and everything. Before I got home, the message already got home to my mom because, you know, they would definitely see. By the time I got home that day, come and see Cain. I dropped Cain My mom beat me that day, not just scold me. Now, coming back to now, you know, we go to the market, we go anywhere, we can eat, we can, you can munch anything, even our mouthful to the, our children can do anything on the road, eating and, because, you know, it's your money, you can do it anyhow, as long as you are doing it decently. I want to bring back to the parenting of now and then. Can we say it was an extra... Um, discipline by telling your child not to do just like we're talking about self-esteem you know they'll tell you over there you know you can walk around and take your coffee and take your burger alongside and everything civilization the gen z's and everything let's bring it back to then and now why can't we emulate what was going on there now why as our children taking it thus far because if you do that to a child of now, hey, now nah, another episode be that. You, you, it's like you're abusing or taking advantage mm. of the child's um, privilege. What's your view about this? Well, I, I still, when, I, when we raise our children, we instill the values that we learn. If I'm to put into perspective, this seems to be that you in my home, for instance, if you are in the car, we say don't eat when you are in the car. No, we get when you eat. Initially, the children they were like, oh, but this person does it, and this person's parents allows them to do it. For instance, you, you can't you can't eat and then drop your your wrapper outside the car anyway. So unless you are ready to eat and then drop whatever wrapper or hold it in your hand, and then for for many of them is uncomfortable to do so. So they would agree. So let us wait until we get home. On the other hand, as parents these days, even in instilling those values, you also have to be humane. You go out with a child, and then you know that child has been hungry all day long. There's no need to say, oh, because my father did it in this way, I must do it in that way. We have to be sympathetic or empath empathic with our children. While at the same time, it's all about balance, really. It's really, really all about balance. You want to bring a little bit of what you learned and you want to be a little bit flexible without letting the child to go all out to the situation that um, my uh, our in-house guest said, which is happening a lot now, sadly, where parents don't even want to discipline, to scold, even to scold. Yesterday I was talking with a, a sister of mine. She's a, Maybe she's on this call now, listening. She's an educationist. And she said, 
when children misbehave and you scold, mind you, not beat, Lagos State says you shouldn't even beat. And then that child, that toddler goes back home. The first thing the, the parent will do is to call in and say, I don't like the way you spoke to my child. I don't like the way it makes my child feel. You didn't even ask, what did my child do? That's the, ex the other extreme of it. So truly, in my opinion, balance is a story. Balance is the issue in this. We don't want to make our children uh, uh, hard feast of discipline and not considering what they are going to. At the same time, you don't want to give you free reign. You don't do whatever you want to do, so long, it, so long as it makes you happy. So I think balance is the issue here. It's okay, Ma. It's been a very wonderful one with you. And of course, we'll still bring you again on the show so that you would educate us more. Time is never enough for us to dissect such topics. And these are very broad topics. It was a nice time having you on the show. Um, we'll get into our in house guests now. Thank you very um, much, Thank Anka. you very much for being there. Thank um, you. Uh, hello. You thank you, you. you heard um, part of what she was saying. Yeah. And I would like to ask you growing up, we had family values. Um, I've had a similar case with my sisters concerning what Olori said, but I don't want to go into that story after Kamara. <laughs> Till today, if I'm talking to my dad over the phone, that fear is still there that I'm talking to my dad. Mm. That respect is still there. I do things, the values I have today, I do it because I still respect the fact that my dad name, I don't want to, I don't Mess want it to. Me, now, she said that this present generation, now she said something that the way we were raised, we are the ones raising our oh, kids okay. that way. Coupled with what you said, that parents don't want to score kids because kids are the ones providing for the for family, the family now. now. How do we walk around this? That, But even if you're the one providing, do you think that parents have should still have that grip over their children? Over because their I children. think we are losing yeah. it. Uh, we need to strike a balance. How do we strike a balance? Is uh, Unlike in the past, when your opinion doesn't count, Let's always hear them out now. I mean, in the past, you can't say, uh, I'm suggesting this. Uh, Mommy, can we do this? Or Daddy, yeah, can we do this? No, authority. you are on your own. Hmm. You are on your own. But now, they want their opinion to count. They want to say something, and they want you to look at it from their own angle and implement it. So let's give them the room so that there won't be any lacuna. Let's give them the opportunity to express themselves. So in the course of doing that, we'll bring them very close. There are certain things we used, I mean, parents used to hide in the past. Mm. They, should, they don't need to yes. hide it now. True. Tell them, oh, this is this. And if you do this, this is the result. You know? Uh, in the past, there are some, some things that parents find it so difficult to, to, share. to share. But now, even if you refuse to share it, they Google for it. They know mm, it on their own. So, since uh, there's opportunity now, let's bring them. Let's bring them on board. What's your view about this? Well, we are planning to do this for grandma. Tell us your view. Mm. You know, at the end of the day, you discover that they are sharing their intelligence with you. Mm. So, you now marry the hood and the new together. And you get to... Something. Okay, <laughs> my question final question as we round up reporting or like your Bible say about me no mommy we didn't know Lord, help me beat my child the the parents will not be happy be sure uh -huh. now you know then like you said before we went on that zoom um, break you said in those days you gave birth to that child everybody around will also train up the child together exactly what has happened to that particular trait that's that's what has happened why has it gone off eh, it's because of uh, the jet age that we are talking because they still want to see themselves that after all i'm old eh, but is it the children's fault or the parents fault because i still have my own parents Sometimes when you tell me my daughter or my son did something, you say, you always listen to people outside. You don't want to take our own you understand. But because I, I expect if you had done the right thing, nobody would have come to report because you know your mom or your sister, your aunt, you will not like it. So is it the parents' fault or the children's fault that I cannot talk to Joy's son or daughter and Joy cannot scold my own daughter? Which uh, fault is it? 
Yeah, it's the fault of the parents hmm. because uh, we like to impose our own thing on them and they don't want that. They don't want an imposition. They don't want a situation whereby whatever you say will be the final. They want their own opinion to count too. So if we can allow them, take from their view, take from their own opinion and you will marry it with your own view too. So that we'll come to a point of equilibrium so that at the end of the day i mean there won't be any friction because that's is their time so to say even if you refuse to tell them some things they will know they will know okay there was this trending video that um, was trending for a very long time and it was so disturbing i had to comment it was a lady who was on her on this dancing in front of her two kids toddler the, the youngest was about five the other one and she was dancing and they were touching her and even though she backed the camera and people were calling her out now do you think that trying to trend all this um you want to be a a, a, a slay mama thing instagram <laughs> you want to you want to yeah, have social this, this media. social media lifestyle has already also contributed to the rot we are having in discipline our children because if not why would a woman a mother, a mother recorded it is on is on is on social media you know why is, is it that the, the quest for um how do i call it chasing the clout or clouds. wanting to be a celebrity mm. in quotes has brought us to this point no you see the effect of uh, social media we can't quantify it hmm. is is enormous social media is enormous because uh, in fact we need to take caution otherwise there are some things that our children will be doing on Danny. And if you are not so vigilant or so, I mean, so intelligent, if you give your phone to your child, you'll be surprised on what they are doing with it. Mm. You'll be surprised. They can even go on to the app that you never and even they, think I'm telling you, open the I know some schools, private schools, there are some, I mean, sites you can't get to that site hmm. when you are in the school. You can do it outside. I mean, why are we having all these uh, conflicts of interest all over between parents and children? Because parents still believe that I'm your parent now. You just have to obey me. This thing that you are doing, I can see the beginning. From I can see the end from, the, from beginning. the beginning. So you can't get any result from here. But they will tell you that no, I can get the results. <laughs> Eh? I can get the results. On that note, we want to say a big thank you to Topo Lukoli. It's thank so you. good to see you. Thank you so and much. And also to Anka. <laughs> uh, it's so good to have every one of you staying tuned to watch us on Family and Value this morning. And I hope you've taken one or two things from what we've discussed so far. Please, let us go back to the basis. And let us balance it. You heard it. Let's, balance. Let's hear their views. We can still make a lot of corrections where all these errors are coming from. Exactly. We can still cut off those grass and remove those weeds and still get a positive future regarding our children. Because don't forget, our, our future is very, very important because when we grow old, they will be the ones to be there to carry on what we've started. My name is Remain Olori. I hope to see you on Monday by the grace of the Almighty God. Nothing will happen to you, nothing will happen to us, and all will be well with you. Have a splendid weekend. Joy. Uh, <laughs> topics like this gets me so emotional because sometimes when you see the ra uh, rate of um, rot in parenting, you tend to ask yourself, where did we get it wrong? wrong? And how do we correct the narrative? Like I used to say, you might be enjoying the jet age now, but what happens to your children's future? Mm -hmm. That is one thing you should always consider in when you're trying to get your balance in life and be who you are. Okay, the weekend is here. And of course, you know, Monday is Christmas. Uh -huh. Larry has promised me a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm super excited because I will have a movie over the weekend so while I'm waiting to receive you on Christmas <laughs> Day, <laughs> which happens to be on Monday. Please download our Galaxy mobile app. We are streaming across all our social media platforms. Please drop in your comments, your feedback, topics like this. Give us your own contribution so that we ask our guest questions and they give us answers. Up next is, the, of course, the next program on um, Galaxy Television. They're already on standby. We will see you on 
Monday. Enjoy the weekend and Merry Christmas in advance. advance. See you.